Hello YouTube, we got a very interesting case today to demonstrate and this is a Toshiba 2.5 inch older drive but this technique may virtually be useful for even the latest hard drives that are out there and uh, today what we're gonna do is we will perform a platter swap procedure because this drive fails to spin so the test that I would normally do to check the function uh, of the drive and find out why it's not spinning would be by performing a couple of simple uh, acoustic tests and maybe give power to the drive which is probably the most important part so right now I have my PC3000 uh, Express set up in a way that our parallel ATA is set to the in line with say the 2 channel so that's the one I'm gonna have to disable the power cable from and this power cable goes in here let's uh, power this thing on and listen to it hmm. doesn't really make too much noises but I'll bring it closer to the mic and power it on again those really really faint noises that the drive was making are the attempts for this drive to spin but it fails to do that so right now the drive I've connected that's going to be our target for the disk imaging once we get the things going with the device so without further ado what we're going to have uh, have to perform here is I'm going to go into my stash of old drives that I got shelf and I'm gonna just find the drive that has exact same model it doesn't have to be a functional drive as long as it can spin that's the only thing I would be worried about it doesn't even have to be a 60 it can probably be a 40 40 gig will probably do but I probably have a 60 I got like a box of these old yeah so here we go this is exact same drive maybe it's not exact same but it's really enough for us to use as long as we can get it to spin so this is the donor that we will use so I'm gonna power this thing on And I think you guys could have maybe even hear that. That was the sound of spin up. That's all we care about. Turn it off. I'm gonna put the jumper settings for Toshiba. Just a second. It's been a while since we had one of these in the lab. For recovery just want to make sure that we get yeah okay so this drive spins and this one doesn't Before I get into it, I should probably mark them. Add a little sticker here with the stickers on the donors right here. So I'll write, I'll put a little D for the donor and I'll put a little S for the source. Okay, so I'll give you a quick um, overview of the things that you will need. 
first of all, you'll need a laminar flow. And um, the reason why I say that is because if you're gonna open up the device, you're gonna need to have control their environment. I work in the laminar flow um, streamlined cabinet uh, when I work on these cases. And uh, what that does is uh, the part on the top up there, it's got a built-in HEPA filter in it that uh, blows the air into the box through the impeller uh, that's powerful enough to actually uh, push enough air into it so that all of the contaminated air that is in the enclosure will start to come out from here. So after having this thing running for about a minute or so, we will have perfectly good environment to work on exposed hard drives. So when I turn the fan on, it will actually be pretty loud, so you guys may hear a little bit of a noise on the background. So I'll give you a quick overview, overview of what's gonna be involved in this data recovery. I'm gonna bust the myth uh, about having, you know, top of the line, uh, high precision tools. Yes, it's nice to have them, but uh, they don't always have to be top of the line. They don't always have to be cutting edge. They don't have to be super expensive in order to get the job done. You can get it done literally like this job if you have access to laminar flow if you have access to disk imaging equipment you can get this done for under five bucks and the tools that you're going to need are all right here okay i have my tape and i got this thing this thing is basically a shrink wrap that you would use to coat your exposed wires with and the cost on it is two dollars 69 cents this thing I had it since 2005. Um, well, we go through these quite often, so <laughs> but they cost nothing. Um, you're also gonna need some compressed air. This is a really good brand actually, and this compression inside of this scan is really good to blow off all the little uh, things uh, before you seal up the device. Um, what I have here is just a bunch of these uh, little things pre-cut that we will use uh, so we don't waste time. Yes, you could use tools like these, um, but it's not the point of this video. We will do it on the budget today and I'll show you guys that the budget can also work and can also do uh, some pretty spectacular things. So this drive that's marked with the S is the one that we're gonna need to fix. This drive that is marked with a D is our donor. We don't care about the um, uh, parts inside of the uh, drive labeled SD. We don't care about the board, we don't care about the discs, we don't care about the heads. We're gonna take all that stuff out, we're only gonna use the chassis from this drive. And the chassis uh, has to be used because the motor is what most likely had seized. These older MK GAS uh, models of the Toshibas had this issue with, uh, with bearings failing left and right. It, it's a really outdated drive. And uh, the problem is most likely not common uh, for anything that's been produced in uh, recent years, but it's still worth showing because if the platter replace platter swap needs to be done on a modern drive that's two and a half inch, chances are it can still use the same principle of work that I will demonstrate right now. So I'll turn this thing on. It may get noisy, so I will probably won't do much talking, but I'll go straight to it. We'll disassemble this, we'll gut it, we'll just leave the bare chassis uh, ready for the transplant. And then all the parts that are inside of this drive will carefully be moved over into this guy here. First thing that we would like to do though, is actually before we gut this, is open up this device and make sure that the heads are not stuck. Because if they're stuck, it might be actually a much easier fix. Alright, so now that the air is preloaded, we're gonna disassemble this guy here.
Now, right now, if the head is on the platter of the on a, is on the platter surface, I'm not I'm not gonna be really surprised because if the motor stops spinning while the heads were on the platters, that's where they're gonna be. So, in order to find out whether or not uh, this motor is bad, uh, we're gonna have to repos re reposition the heads into the parking spot and then actually turn the spindle and see if we feel any resistance. If we feel any resistance that the bearing has trouble spinning, we can be rest assured that the, 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 the power that this drive is getting, the five volt that this drive is getting to rotate, is not gonna be enough to keep it going. So as you guys can see, actually uh, the heads are parked perfectly. Uh, they are in the parking position on this little white plastic ramp and that's where they're supposed to be when the drive is not getting power. So I'm guessing that this, this drive is just old. It's been probably sitting somewhere for a really long time, turned off and maybe the, the, over time the, the dynamic bearing, dynamic fluid in the bearing uh, dried up or something got uh, to a point where it's really stiff. So like right now, if I'm trying to turn it, it doesn't even move like it's it starts turning but i feel a lot of resistance like there's a lot of resistance this should, should be silky smooth okay so this is a night this is actually as perfect of an example as i could have imagined for this case i'm gonna say that uh 99 chance that that drive will be recovered and it will work almost like new well at least long enough until we image it that we'll get this drive recovered with resources for under five bucks the rest was just at our disposal tools that will help us with the imaging process tools that uh, uh, help to keep the dust away from this drive when we work but maybe Maybe in the near future, I'll shoot a video for you guys that may, a lot, may have a lot of interest and that's gonna be um, a video on how you can build a laminar flow bench for under $100. Now, if you go out and buy it from like one of those science places, it may cost you around 10 grand if you want to send it, send one from China, it will still cost you at least a few thousand dollars to get one. And then you have to deal with shipping, then you have to deal with customs and other headaches. Uh, alternative to this may be, uh, you know, surplus uh, stores that may be dealing with some government organizations that uh, got laminar flow benches in stock. I know there are definitely companies like that out there that may be actually really useful for startup data recovery case. You may have to change filters, but with good cleaning those stations can be very well reused. I'm not sure why we're disassembling this now, but it's not It's not like it's gonna have any effect, but I, I just wanna set this aside for now because we need to have this drive fully prepped before we do any uh, transplant work on the, on the drive that we're trying to recover data from. So, um, as I said, we don't really need to worry about much um, with this drive here. So, all of the entire drive we'll just go straight into the recycle bin including the discs including the heads well I'll extract heads carefully because they may still be needed although I doubt it if the if the heads in this drive were not in parking position I'd say we would, would really need to keep the heads but um, I think the heads in the original drive, they will be just fine.
And what this basically is, is like a, it's like a little tiny strip that, of the sh shrink wrap that I cut. And the reason why I love this uh, so much is because it's uh, it's made out of the material that it's not it's not uh, it's not slick. You know, uh, some of the videos out there that demonstrate, oh, this is how you can make a tool for uh, head extraction out of a, like a pill container or something I've watched uh, like back in the day. Well, good luck swapping heads with uh, with a pill container. You look at it wrong, from a wrong angle, that thing will will shoot across the room. And these things, they got like grip. Like even if you even if you just you know don't handle it well, and it feels like oh my god, they could have fell out. They're not gonna fall out. These things are actually. It's it, in in some cases I'll be honest with you. In some cases I prefer them to even top quality tools like HDD surgery. We do use HDD surgery for a lot of cases, uh, and they're super precise, super fine tools. I love them. But uh, in some cases, when you know you, you know that you're confident in what you can do with the tools that you really like, and you see that they're working for you, you don't have to really. be swayed into uh, something else so so the ones with the washers they will be holding the uh, the board the ones without the washers are holding the actuators I don't know why I'm really so careful with that drive right now because it's all going to be taken apart in like literally no time now here's a little part that I have to kind of explain is that because um, of the compression on uh, like heads are constantly trying to push down uh, towards each other and close up so that little uh, spacer goes in between to kind of, kind of keep them separated, right? So uh, different drives would have different distance between the heads and you need to find really like the optimal spot where it doesn't uh, force the heads to go um, too far apart and doesn't, doesn't let them to close either. So it's kind of like the golden middle spot where you have to find it and uh, just dial it in. And to do that, the best way I'd say you just put your eyes in the level with the head assembly and look at it. If it's straight, as the heads continue to come out towards the end of the parking ramp, that's where you want it to be. And while it's still on the parking ramp, it's safe to do some very careful adjustments. But again, it has to be done really, really carefully. When the heads come out, they can be as close to, to, to be touching each other without actually touching each other as possible. But you definitely don't want them to be too far apart because there are other things in the parking ramp that I can actually cause uh, damage if you have it set up that way. Again, if you have any questions, post, uh, post them in the comments. I check all my videos constantly and I reply as soon as I get a chance to. Here's how this head assembly looks when it comes out. I hope that you can see that. Um, so we're going to keep this head assembly just in case because, um, well, I want to make sure that the heads that are in our patient drive are functional. But the rest of this drive doesn't really matter. Uh, we can just take all these parts out and not even worry about the discs. The beauty about two um, and a half inch drives is that there's only one screw holding the discs in place.
Okay, so this is how the motor should be rotating. It's, it's very, very smooth. It literally takes no resistance to push it. And if we hook up the PCB to it and give power to the drive, there's a good chance that that thing will just start spinning on its own. But we won't do that now. We'll just keep it with the lid closed and sitting right here. Okay, this is where the fun begins. We have to basically take all of the guts from this drive and transplant them into that chassis there. So heads, magnets, this little piece, the parking ramp, and the discs themselves that have the data on them. So we already removed all the hardware that's holding the head assembly and the actuators. So I'm just gonna take the magnet off the top And the parts that we're going to be reusing, I'm going to be placing them on this side of the table. That came out really nice. Perfectly positioned those uh, those spacers. Perfect gap in there. Instead of there. see that like I mean I'm trying to move it it just doesn't move okay now the delicate part for this part I have to uh, actually remove my gloves I I can't do this with the gloves on the tape sticks to them and uh, it will make me mess up more than uh, me messing up this drive by removing it. the gloves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut little strips of tape The tape will be put on the edge of the disc surface. Now, by turning the, the drive very slowly, I'm making sure that the tape gets applied on all of the sides. Okay, right here, the tape began catching something, so I have to touch it up a little bit. Okay, we can apply another piece of tape because we didn't make a full circle, but do we really need to do that? Not really. Uh, as long as we got 100 an 80 degree going through the center in a flat line to something to grab on grab onto we got a good connection so what you want to do next and this is a really fragile part in the center of the drive there are four dimples okay by I, we don't want to push onto uh, the side of the disc uh, not to cause any movement in the X and Y axis so but we also need to apply some pressure to the spindle so it doesn't spin because right now if I put a, a screwdriver in there and turn it the drive will actually rotate so 
these dimples will help me keep the, the, the drive from uh, not, will keep it from, from spinning, but it will also allow me to break that top bolt free. Okay, so this is what we end up with. So we got our donor on the side. Now those dimples have corresponding holes in them that are in the spindle itself. And as you can see, the top washer also has four holes in it. So they need to basically line up, okay? So we just did that. We can try to tighten this up a little bit more to see if there's any slack, but I think that's good enough you don't want to tighten it too tight either tape comes off and this is our old spindle it, it rotates but there is no way, like, if I, if I take a, if I try to push it with my pinky, like, it actually needs force to move. That bearing is so bad, it will never be able to spin. It will never be able to spin on its own. We're going to take this board, because this board will have to go back onto uh, the device. Just like everything else that came from the donor and the original device also. And maybe I should probably wear another set of gloves because um, we, don't, we don't have to deal with the tape anymore.
Now, if you build a, a laminar flow bench with one of the following videos that we're going to shoot, probably tomorrow, maybe the day after, I'll have some time to actually go shopping for the uh, materials. You would be able to do this probably for under $105. But you will still need some good imaging equipment. Unfortunately, I do not have any any on budget uh, expertise with uh, tools like that. We only use data extractor, which is the best of the best that you can get for imaging. Don't get me wrong, there are other uh, imaging tools that are really good as well, but I, I find that there's nothing better than data extractor because uh, you have your PC3000, you have a bunch of options that no other imaging equipment has, and uh, the speed, the speed on Express is amazing. Not that it would really make any difference for this guy, because that's an old drive. The speed on this drive is probably probably can handle UDMA 33. Um, the board, the board from this chassis needs to come off. We can't use that board. Maybe we can actually because it's an older drive, but there was nothing wrong with the board. I know for sure that it works because we heard noises that were coming from the device, and we tested the spindle, and we could clearly see that it's broken actually very excited because we're getting close to resolution Let's see if we can get it done within half an hour mm, that's filthy I'm gonna dispose of that that could have been caused by the heat uh, that the uh, PCB was generating because it was uh, not successful pushing that motor all that well that was uh, completely seized oh it's not going on this guy it's going on here I'm like where are the heads i'm looking at the hole in here and it's like where are the heads Alright, we're almost done. I just gotta put this uh, board back on and uh, fire this thing up. And I have a really good feeling that this thing will work just like it's supposed to. Okay, you can see this is the S drive that we marked. Alright, let's give it a try. So I already have a uh, channel 3 with the target drive uh, all set up. That's where the data is going to be uh, imaged onto. And again, this is... If I'm doing this and it's not rotating, there is no motor. There is no PCB that will be able to provide more power with 5 volt to make it spin. Okay, the moment of truth. Spins, calibrates, what else can we ask for? The drive, I just tested it on a different machine. We have a few of them here and um, I figured out what the issue was. So. 
in the uh, control in the in the main view of the PC3000 uh, utility set, there is an option to select which drive is going to have the cable select settings. And that's exactly what we we're getting. The drive spins up, gives us the ID, and then shows all of the registries lit up like a Christmas tree. Usually that would happen if you have the cable ID set up wrong. So I'm going to hook this up again. Power this thing on. And um, just get these guys out of the way. Right now, all of the registry lights up here are lit up. I'm gonna turn it off. Instruments, cable select. We're gonna select it for the uh, parallel ATA1 channel, which is the one that we're using. And right now we only get two registries. So if I'm gonna hit auto uh, select for the utility, it automatically detects it that this drive is a Toshiba and picks the correct 25 JAS family. We're gonna fire this up. The drive gets in. My battery is flashing that it's dying. I'm gonna go into sector edit and look at the first sector. This is our boot record, looks perfect to me. You can skip through the sectors. So 609F. 9S. Parallel ATA 1 is the source. SATA 2 is the target. Finally, we're in. Here we go. This is after a platter swap with literally $5 worth of materials involved in the process. That's, uh, that may take like an hour at least on this uh, old 60 gig drive, but you get the point. It's working and it's working pretty good. Subscribe and like this video.